Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by the Guild. I am Tom Downey. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for some more Cowboys coverage. We'll dive in here to the latest Cowboys rumors. First up is Leighton Van Der Esch going to miss minicamp. I'm going to give it only two stars for now because he is questionable for the minicamp that will happen later in June. Now, LV missed the last part of OTAs with an ankle injury. It is just a sprain, but the Cowboys are going to be cautious here, and I think rightfully so. You don't want to rush Van Der Esch back, but it is a little bit of a concern for me. I don't like seeing linebacker and injury in the same sentence in large part. Well, thanks, Sean Lee, for that part. But Van Der Esch will be fine long term, but you do want him out there for minicamp and for him to get some more reps and see if he can become the number two guy alongside Sean Lee and to beat out Jones. But we'll see what happens on that front. Speaking of Sean Lee, is he the most overpaid Dallas Cowboy? This one is fake news, and Bleach Report claims this is the case. I've got a lot of questions. First off, Bleach Report, how dare you? How dare you accuse Sean Lee of being overpaid? Yes, he has an $11 million cap it. Yes, he has battled injuries. But I think we saw last year how important Sean Lee is to this Cowboys team. He is without a doubt not overpaid. Yeah, he gets, he gets a lot of money. But when healthy, he is one of the best linebackers in the NFL. The correct answer is probably Tyrone Crawford, a $9.1 million cap it. You can throw up Terrence Williams in there. And oh, by the way, the Cowboys, they're still paying Romo almost $9 million this year on their cap thanks to some unfortunate having to restructure deals in the past and then retiring and spreading that, out, spreading that out over two years via a post-June 1st cut. But Sean Lee is not the most overpaid player on the Dallas Cowboys. He makes a lot, yes, but he's a damn good linebacker and the Cowboys need him on the field. That is not overpaid by any means. All right, folks, if you haven't already, subscribe to our new Cowboys Report YouTube channel, chatsports.com slash Cowboys T. V have all of our great Cowboys coverage on there all in one spot. It's the best Cowboys coverage you'll find. If it's the first time watching the show and you're wondering what the rumors mean, here you go. Zero stars since the number of fights that Odo Beckham won against the net. One star is a small shred of truth. Two stars means people are talking. Three means it's pretty likely but not quite set in stone. And four stars means that Zeke's eaten. All right, next rumor. Did the Cowboys have some Jason Garrett replacements in mind? And I'm going to give it three stars. Look, any GM in front office worth a damn has a list of coaches that they want to interview if and when they have to fire their head coach or something happens where he leaves. So, yes, the Cowboys have their own set of replacements. It doesn't mean, however, that they're going to get any of these guys or that they'll be the top options for the Cowboys to pursue. Now, the report from Mike Fisher is that a handful of guys are already on this list. And we'll break down some of those guys here that the Cowboys could consider and could target if and when Garrett is fired after this year. Some coaches to monitor here. The first the first five of the five guys that Mike Fisher mentioned. Sean Payton, sign me up for that one. John Fox, Jack Del Rio, don't like it at all. David Shaw is someone that almost every NFL team wants, but I doubt he leaves Stanford. And then, yes, Chris Richard on there as well, currently being groomed to be the Cowboys' D.C. But there is a second set of guys here that Al threw out his guys to monitor. Lincoln Rifes, and I mentioned a few times on Twitter, just a guy to monitor. Brian Flores, I am all bored. John D. Flip, I think he's going to be a great head coach. I'd hire him right away. Matt LaFleur as well with the Titans. And then Jim Bob Cooter as well with the Detroit Lions. So, folks, let me know. If Jason Garrett is fired, who do you want to be the next Cowboys head coach? Let me know in the comments section. It can be anyone. I'm sure we'll see some weird names, so I'll just mention it right now. No, Troy Aikman, Jimmy Johnson, Romo. Those guys are not actual options to be the next Cowboys head coach. We'll take it out to the secondary here. Chidobie Awuzie, is he going to stay at cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys? I'm going to give this one three stars. It does seem pretty likely overall that Awuzie is going to be the staying at cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys here. He said that he'll play any position overall, but, and, but he said that it's confirmed that I'll play cornerback. And now, there had been some buzz in the past that the Cowboys could try to move Cheeto to safety. I don't think that will happen for the Cowboys. I think in reality that the, the Cowboys will keep Cheeto Bieboozi at the cornerback spot and that they're not going to move him to safety in the end. I think that makes a lot more sense for Dallas, and I think that's where he needs to stay. I think Awuzie is going to be a really good corner for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, the reason it's three, he three stars and not four, what if there's an injury? If Jeff Heath, Xavier Woods, or Kevon Frazier goes down, Man, you better find yourself a new safety, 
even if that ends up being you have to go trade for somebody else. So I think that's the route to go there. If you're the Cowboys, keep Cheeto at, at corner for now. If something happens, maybe you reevaluate. But I think the best route for him is to stay at cornerback. All right, next up, could Anthony Brown be on the trade block? I'm only going to give this one one star. It comes from inside the star. I guess it makes a little bit of sense. But even though I'm not the biggest Anthony Brown fan, I think it's a terrible idea. Inside the star says Brown could be trade bait for Dallas. You'd get a fourth round pick back for him, which I do think you could get for Anthony Brown. But here's the thing. You can never have too many corners, and I actually really hate the idea of trading away Anthony Brown. As of right now, he's been working with the Nickel, even though I think he's going to be the number four cornerback for the Dallas Cowboys. Here are your top four guys. Without a doubt, they're all locks. And I like some of the other guys at cornerback for the Cowboys. Marquez White, Duke Thomas, Travarius Ward, Donovan Lumba. All guys that could be your, your number five corner. But if you trade Anthony Brown, and then let's say Cheeto gets hurt again, your cornerback crew is actually pretty bad. So no, do not trade Anthony Brown. I think it's a terrible, terrible idea. Don't do it. Keep him as worst case as your number four cornerback, and you'll be in very good shape with where you sit. All right, folks, we're going to talk Earl Thomas here in just a second. But first, over from our sponsor, The Guild. Your next day, kind of like a luxury Airbnb. All right, so folks, could Earl Thomas come to the Cowboys? The new development is that Earl Thomas officially will hold out from Seahawks minicamp as he requests a new trade or a new contract, maybe a trade as well. But I'm only going to give it the one star. I still don't consider it all that likely. Deion Sanders, among others, says, hey, Dallas should go trade for him, which, yeah, it'd be great. It still takes two to tango, and Earl Thomas wants a big, fat new contract from Seattle. He also that he wants to retire a Seahawk. This is not Earl Thomas demanding a trade. This is Earl Thomas wanting a big new contract. And, yeah, it'd be great to get Earl Thomas on the roster, bring him in, and have him be your stud safety. I know that Chris Richard would like it. I know that a lot of you guys want Earl Thomas out there as well. But Seattle, I still believe, wants to keep Earl Thomas. So they're not going to take a low ball offer for a one of the best safeties in the NFL. You're talking, I think, at least a second-round pick. Seattle said no to a third-rounder during last year's draft. The Cowboys called. Seattle never called them back about the offer. Yes, Thomas wants more money. Yes, this does complicate things for Seattle. I still don't think, though, it's all that likely that, that Seattle will accept a trade offer for Dallas. On the flip side, if you're, if you're the Cowboys, you're not going to trade a first-round pick. That makes no sense for you. A second-round pick, I think you'd contemplate it, but you don't know if your team is going to be a top team in the NFL. If there are some injuries, all of a sudden that, that second-round pick becomes a top-40 pick, and you don't want to do that if you're the Cowboys. So I don't think a free agent, a, an offseason trade is that likely right now. If we get to next year and in free agency, that's where I think it makes a little bit more sense to Dallas. So the dream is not dead. I just don't think it's all that likely that a trade will happen before the season starts. I think Seattle will try to win for one more year. If they vote up to that, maybe it makes more sense. But I would be very surprised if a trade did go down. So just, just the one star there on Earl Thomas, who we'll come back to again later in the show. Don't you guys worry. Next up, Zach Martin. Will they be at minicamp this year for Dallas? I'm going to give it two stars. Jason Garrett said he didn't really know and... I guess it depends on what your definition of at is. Uh, is it just going to be they're going to be there and be present? If so, I think it's more like three stars. There have been the reports that both are expected to report for the Cowboys. But even if they're present, how much are they actually going to practice? You might see Zach Martin be there and not practice as he waits for a big, fat new contract. And both these players have questionable minicamp futures because, well, for different reasons in reality. Zach Martin wants a big new contract and rightfully so. He should be the highest paid guard in the NFL. David Irving, meanwhile, well, he was reportedly overweight at OTAs and has had a lot to do with this offseason with the false domestic violence accusations. So we'll see on both those guys. I think they'll both be at minicamp, but they might not be participating at minicamp. Next up, are the Cowboys going to disappoint in 2018? I'll give this one two stars as well, and again, it kind of depends on what your expectations are for the Cowboys. If you think it's Super Bowl or bust for the Cowboys, I think they're going to disappoint you. But if you're looking at the over-under win total set by Vegas at only 8.5, I kind of feel pretty good about Dallas' chances this year. 
I think that Dallas will be about a 10-win team, and they'll be right in the playoff bubble, but I don't know if they'll actually make it. So it's all about what your expectations are for Dallas. I think the fan ones are much higher than 8.5, and I think rightfully so. This is a potential playoff team. But if you're thinking 11 or 12 wins, I think you might be let down a little bit. So that's why it's two stars there. But, folks, let me know in the comments section what you think the Cowboys' record will be in 2018. Is it going to be eight wins, nine wins, ten wins or more, you know, seven or fewer, which would definitely get Jason Garrett fired? Let me know in the comments section. One last rumor, then, is Travis Frederick the most underrated Dallas Cowboy? And again, I'll give it two stars. I get where the Dallas Morning News was coming from on this one. They say, yes, Frederick was... The, is perhaps the best center in the NFL, but he's still underrated because he's not just the best center, he's one of the best players in the NFL. He's still a little bit underappreciated, and I, I get that. He's a four-time Pro Bowler, though. I still would have gone with someone like a Byron Jones, who I'm higher on than I think everybody else out there, or Sean Lee, because Sean Lee, as we saw from Pleasure Report, is very much undervalued around the NFL, who's not going to be a top 100 player, by the way. That's not going to be Sean Lee. So I get where Frederick is coming from, or the, the morning news is coming from on Frederick, but I don't think he's quite the most underrated player on the Dallas Cowboys.